Welcome back, I'm Dr. Dai, and in this video we're going to be exploring the complexity of eukaryotic cells. So eukaryotic cells are the cornerstone of complex life forms. Uh, they provide the foundation for the diversity and intricacy of all living organisms. Uh, they're characterized by compartmentalized structures and the presence of membrane-bound organelles, um, including that distinct nucleus that houses the genetic material big distinguishing feature from prokaryotes. Uh, there are two prominent categories that really stand out. There's animal cells and plant cells, and they're featured on this slide for you. But that's not the only kind of cells. Um, well, we'll talk about that in a second. But so these two cell types share a lot of fundamental similarities, uh, while also having some really unique adaptations tailored to uh, their respective roles within the larger uh, biome, right? Um, so there's a huge range of protists that are not like animal cells and they're not like plant cells, or some of them, some of them rather, are a little like plant cells or a little like animal cells. Um, fungi as well are another uh, group of eukaryotic uh, cell types that are not like plants or animals. Though fungi are a little bit more like animals than plants. Um, but for our purposes, we're gonna stay focused in on plant and animal cells. Um, should you ever get the chance, uh, taking a course uh, more focused in microbiology can be an interesting experience for learning more about some of these other types. So we're gonna spend the rest of this section uh, defining the features of eukary eukaryotic plant and animal cells, and hopefully help you understand the key aspects that make them essential for multicellular life. Let's start with the surface of the cell. So the plasma membrane is this complex lipid bilayer that serves as a dynamic interface between the cell and its surroundings. Um, there's a diverse range of embedded proteins and other molecules that um, structure the membrane. Not, it not only defines the boundary of the cell, but it orchestrates an array of vital processes, including molecular transport, signal transduction, cell recognition, so like how your immune system recognizes the cells that belong in your body versus ones that don't, foreign invaders. Uh, the plasma membranes phospholipid bilayer uh, is selectively permeable. We're gonna talk more about that um, in a later video. But basically what this means is that it only allows certain things through. Uh, so certain ions, certain molecules, even information has to cross over this, this boundary. Um, this is a really essential feature for maintaining internal versus external environments for the cell uh, and ensures that the cell functions properly and survives when it's supposed to survive because sometimes cells need to be programmed to die and this also plays an important role in that process. Uh, one of the many adaptations found in specialized cells is something called microvilli. And these are really, they're minute finger-like projections that are really rich in something called actin filaments, which we'll talk about in a few minutes. Um, and they significantly increase the cell's surface area. Remember, we mentioned surface area before. Uh, this, we see these kinds of uh, like cells with these special uh, plasma membrane projections in places like uh, your digestive tract where you want to increase the surface area of the barrier between your intestine and moving into your bloodstream so that as many nutrients can be absorbed as, as possible. We also see these in sensory cells uh, where that enhanced surface area optimizes the process um, of perception. It's like in your eyes, um, we see this. All right. Now, so that was the surface, let's take a step inside. Um, the cytoplasm uh, is going to be well, where all the biochemical processes inside the cell occur, most of them at least, uh, is kind of a gel-like substance, uh, and that's because of all the proteins and carbohydrates present in, in the cytoplasm. Um, it occupies the space between the plasma membrane and the nucleus. Uh, the Fluid inside the nucleus is called the nucleoplasm, and it's a little bit different. Um, but the cytoplasm hosts all the organelles, um, all the various molecular components, the cytoskeleton, all these specialized pathways for moving things throughout the cell. We'll talk about the cytoskeleton in just a second. So this is where 
cellular metabolism is going to occur, energy production, protein synthesis, um, not all protein synthesis, but some protein synthesis. And each process is governed by specialized enzymes and substrates and other regulatory molecules, usually proteins, um, that make it all happen in the way that it's supposed to. Um, within the cytoplasm, organelles like the mitochondria and the ribosomes, uh, they work together to generate energy and construct the vital components of the, the cell. Um, the cytoskeleton is what it sounds like. It's a cell skeleton. Uh, it, cre it has all these special filaments that hold the structure of the cell, or in some cases, allow the cell to move. So the cytoskeleton, there are a range of different types of filaments. Um, they are elaborate and dynamic. Um, this structure, it's made of protein filaments um, that form, in some cases, tubes, um, tubes that fill, like if you were to look at the inside of a cell, right, we've got a couple of these pictures, it actually can even look like um, like when a skyscraper is being built and you have all those big beams, kind of looks like that. Um, and then create, we call it a scaffold, um, roadways, if you will, for things to be transported. Um, you know, oftentimes we think of the organelles and all the different things in the cells kind of like free floating in the cytoplasm. Um, some things are, but most things are anchored in place via attachments to parts of the cytoskeleton. Um, the cytoskeleton orchestrates cellular functions with high precision. So microtubules um, are constructed from something called tubulin, and it creates the framework for what's called intracellular transport, um, as well as for cell division and helps maintain the cell's shape. Uh, microfilaments are formed from actin monomers. Um, they participate in cell movement, contraction, and membrane support. Um, actin plays an important role when we talk about um, muscle cell contraction. Um, and then intermediate filaments are um, really diverse and they contribute to cell stability, uh, particularly in tissues subjected to a lot of mechanical stress. So like we see a lot of intermediate filaments um, in like your skin or in the tissues that surround, um, surround your organs. Uh, the cytoskeleton is very adaptable and it's very, we call it, has high plasticity, meaning it can change very readily. This is really key to a lot of cell functions. Um, if when we think about when a cell needs to go through cell division, uh, there's a lot of physical changes that have to happen, including you know, separating into two separate cells, um, and the cytoskeleton helps facilitate that process. Uh, beyond structural support, the cytoskeleton also facilitates cellular communication, uh, signal transduction, so that's um, part of sending signals from one cell, even within one cell to another part of the cell or from one cell to another, um, and even like nucleus positioning and other organelle positioning. Some examples of specialized structures um, that are made of cytoskeletal components are the uh, flagella and cilia. So these are very important in cellular locomotion, so movement, um, and sensory perception. So cilia and flagella are microscopic structures, right? Um, that have, they have a lot of different functions from like said, sensory perception, like the rods in your eyes, um, to assemblies of microtubules and associated proteins that extend, they extend out the cell surface, so they actually distend the, the plasma membrane. So this is a like, fusion sort of of the cell membrane and this um, cytoskeletal structure, and that can form uh, flagella or cilia that can propel the cell depending on the organism. Um, cilia and flagella share a common structural architecture in most eukaryotes, um, both possessing this thing called a nine plus two arrangement. Um, and that's not so important for this course, but um, it forms these really neat rings, um, or it looks like a ring in cross-section, but it's actually a long tube. Um, cilia, so they're same, the same tube structure. Um, we tend to use that term when we're referring to many, many of these structures that tend to be on the shorter side covering a cell surface or parts of a cell surface. Um, they're often associated with uh, cell motility in single-celled um, like protists, uh, but we also see them on the cell surface um, for like really specialized cells like in your lungs or during embryonic development. Cilia play an important role in uh, 
the sidedness of your body. So determining the right and left side, like for heart positioning and things like that. Um, cilia beat in a coordinated fashion. So they, um, it's like a, it's like a whip movement. Uh, we see them also coating the interior of your nasal passages and your lungs, and it moves mucus through through those um, tissues. Um, flagella we usually use to refer to, it's usually a long projection, either out the front of the cell or the back of the cell. Uh, they are typically associated with motility. Um, there are several different flagella-associated motilities. Um, and they can also uh, be found um, for transport of ova through the fallopian tubes, interestingly enough. Uh, this is what drives it's the motility for sperm as a single flagella sticking out the back end of the cell. Uh, but yeah, these are really, really interesting structures. I studied, um, I studied flagella during my doctorate. Really, really fascinating stuff. Um, all right, so that wraps up the cytoskeleton. 